Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Well, it is 9.24 at the moment on the 12th, uh, excuse me, the 20th of December. And you can see why we've got big shadow of that tree right here moving across this way. And the shadow of the house is coming right behind it. So as it moves across, we're going to have basically no sun on our garden for the next three weeks or so on this garden. And we're going to go over to the other garden and we're going to see what we can find for harvestable rutabagas. It has been super cold. The last one I dug out was frozen solid. And uh, I'm going to do a little experiment today. I have rutabagas saved in two locations in the house and uh, one, well, the garden is another location. And we've got uh, three different ways over there. We had one that was out in the open, which I've already tested. That was pretty frozen. So I covered those up with leaves. But we have others covered up with leaves from the beginning and others with bags of leaves stood up over them with some pipes to hold them up and one of the two probably under the bags today I'm gonna reach in and see if I can harvest a medium-sized one bring that home and compare it to the one that's sitting in the garage on the shelf and also compare it to the one that's in the basement covered with wax that has not mushed. <laughs> there was a, quite a few of them that did mush but it may have been because they uh, were completely airtight. So we're off to the garden, the main garden. Still freezing this morning. 954 All right, let's see if I'm recording this time. I was recording earlier. I thought it was, but what to harvest a rutabaga from under the bags which I've got in my bag but I'll go show where I pulled it up the ground out here is frozen solid at least three or four inches deep I just took some uh, Brussels sprouts over there and from right here, from this hole right here, I took a rutabaga and you can see that the ground is still thawed, even though it's been freezing for like three weeks now. 
and the ground out here is solid garlics here are doing good probably wouldn't hurt to have a few more leaves but I'm going to show you the kale hoops hoop house got some good kale in here and uh, I picked two leaves already right from this plant right here you can see where I busted it off kale is doing good put my hat back on and gather this back together That'll hold it tight so the wind doesn't go. I also checked the strawberries earlier up on that end. This time I think I'll check down on this end. Strawberry's still green. Hasn't froze, as far as I can tell. Maybe with all the rain that's coming tomorrow, it might have a chance to freeze down that low, but we'll see. Some of the rutabagas in here are popping up through the leaves that are blowing off. In fact, I'm going to go check right here and see if the ground throws down in there. It is a little bit. All right, we'll do it that way. And let me see, the kale down here, that's out in the open. I broke off a piece this morning and tasted it. Not quite as sweet, took a piece from right here. Right here, just like this one. And uh, even though it's been frozen for a while, it's pretty good. Not as sweet as the broccoli. I mean the uh, Brussels sprout leaves. Kale under here and the spinach under there. Under the glass are doing good. Brussels sprouts you can see are growing back. More sprouts. So I'm going to be able to harvest those all winter. I did take some Brussels sprouts from right in here. You can see the place where I broke it off there and there and across the top. Got some real good ones down underneath. I'm gonna protect them with these leaves. I may come back and put some, uh, there's a sprout right there I'm gonna eat. Mmm, nice and crunchy. Bunch of them on that one. Might cover this up with some Agrabon. Put some rocks over it or something. But, the ground is definitely frozen. Big time. And we're not going to get any sun until about the sun gets over there and then it's going to be right down behind those trees. But this is the winter solstice. It's the lowest the sun gets. And we're getting a little bit of sun here from the side of that tree. And that's about what we can expect this time of year. So I'm going to strap in, head back home, and compare the rutabaga from fresh out of the garden to the rutabaga in the garage, which is uh, kind of soft compared to the fresh one, and I'm going to compare all those to the rutabaga that I covered with wax earlier in the uh, fall when it had grown through the summer. <coughs> so we want to check what's the best way to store the rutabagas. And of course the best way to grow them is to plant them in the summer 
and grow them into the fall as late as you can. Keep them in the ground. That way they'll be fresh longer into the year. Some of them, of course, I'm going to try keeping them in the ground all winter. Okay, we have four rutabagas. Two on the right are both waxed. And I can feel that, and it's a little bit soft, but it's fairly, fairly hard. This one here is the one I'm going to actually use because it's getting a little bit softer here and there. It's firm even on the on the spot that looks dirty, and, but this will go bad soon, so I'm going to use that one. This one I'm going to set off to the side just to show you that. Oh, wait a minute. It's getting some squishy stuff on the top here. And I can reach all the way in it. I better use that one, too. So, this is the one that was in the garage. With no wax on it. Nothing. Just cleaned off and put in the garage. It's been through some warm weather, so it has sprouted. This one here has been in the basement where it's fairly warm. That has sprouted, but didn't get any sunlight. And here's the one I just harvested today, and it is very hard. It looks like it's even looks like it's even frozen, but it's not. The dirt around it was not frozen, and so that's what we're going to use. We're going to not peel this one, but dice it. And the ones that have the wax on it, and the one from the garage. We're going to have to uh, peel because, I don't know, it looks pretty gross on the outside. So that's okay. what we're, do. we're back with our peeler and our knife and our four rutabagas. The fresh one, even though it's been in the house for a while, it is fairly hard. So we're going to peel off the roots, I guess. And we'll cut that up. This one we're just going to, well, I'm going to keep the greens because I'm going to eat those. Yellows are not quite as good. The yellows over here are good. I'm going to eat those as well. And the one from the garage, I'm going to peel. As you'll see when we cut. I'm going to cut this one right in half. Cut this one in half. Here's a snap when the thing hit the board. Now, you can see the, the veins in each of them. Still look fairly fresh ones that have been sitting in the garage. This one is so solid I can't even squeeze it. And the way I'm going to dice it up is just crossways. And then just dice it this way. And now I'm going to make a stir fry for breakfast. I'm not going to use daikon or squash with it. I'm just going to make like pan fried potatoes except out of rutabagas. Yesterday I made pan fried potatoes out of dice like this out of potatoes. But today we're going to just do it with near the snap when cutting these. And you'll see the difference when I now that's the other half of the hard one and this is I cut the top off throw that in the garbage
and it's still fairly fresh. I guess more important than whether you have wax on it or not is what temperature you're keeping them at. This one was kept in the garage where it was fairly cool except for a few days when it was warm. And uh, this one over here was kept in the basement where it's at least 50 degrees even when it's cool outside. So this one is fairly fresh. It's been out in the garage since, oh my goodness, I don't remember when I brought it in. It must have been a couple months ago. October, let's say. And I've been keeping the ones out in the garden watched and still in the ground for all that time. Of course, the ones that I brought into the garage were ones that were planted earlier in the year when I didn't know what I was doing. All right, let's peel one of these. And uh, we'll peel the one that's got the deepest hole in it. Let's see what we've got here. Of course, you got to peel this because it's got wax on it. You don't want to eat the wax. Now, the ones that I waxed, been watching, and we have thrown out about half of them already because of uh, spongy rot like what we've got on the top here. I'm going to cut this right about there. And it still goes in somewhat. So I'm going to cut around it. And we'll chop that all up. This top piece I've got plenty of stuff here, so I'm actually going to throw this part away. Normally I wouldn't throw any away, but I am going to throw that away. Well, this one's fairly firm, too. It's not, it's not as soft as uh, as the squash that we're going to be cutting up later. So we're going to have plenty of rutabaga for breakfast, that's for sure. So I'm going to finish cutting this up. I'm going to peel this one and cut this up. And we'll check you later. Okay, we got our rutabagas all chopped up into dice. About quarter inch by quarter inch by quarter inch. We're going to fry those up. It's going to take more than one batch in this frying pan. We're going to use oil that we have previously used for deep frying our french fries. Now, what did we do with all the peelings that we had? from the rutabagas. Well, if you've been paying attention, we do not waste anything. All the peels go into our compost, and in the winter time, our compost is in the form of a five gallon pail, five gallon bucket, that uh, used to be a paint bucket, or a sheetrock putty bucket, or just a bucket that you can buy for storage at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever and uh, take all the garbage. We took everything in the peels, uh, greens left over from whatever, celery cuttings and whatever and we, boy it's not getting hot very fast, and we put it all in the bucket. Now that bucket is going to be important in the spring when we get ready to plant our squash or watermelon or pumpkin because we dig this pit two foot by three foot and we dig it down and we end up with four plants in there that the roots all go down deep into where we've got the compost that we saved all winter long down in that pet and squash especially and pumpkin really like that stuff Okay, this is getting fairly warm, but we're going to 
flip these things over and let them get oily on the on the other side. And once they're all oily, I'm going to just put the cover on and let it right. heat up. It's getting hot all right because we're burning the bottoms of them. And I like them getting brown like that, so we'll just turn them over. Put them all back down, cover them back up, get them off the glass lid, and cook them some more. I still have the oven on high. All right, time to stir them for the second time. Ah, popping like corn. Notice the brown. I love the brown, caramelizing whatever sugars are in there. All right, A third turn. I think these are about done. Notice how brown they are. I'm going to put those in this dish over here. And put a little bit more oil in and the rest of our rutabagas. I want them to get oily all over before we go cooking them too long. If there's not enough oil in there. I'll have to put some more. Ah, looks pretty good. Still cooking on high. Now, I never did season these while they were in there. So, I'm going to grab three things up here. Bacon salt, which we tried just the other day. And some mushroom garlic. And I'm mix those up and I'm gonna try them before I put this this tagin. This tagin is uh it's got a lot of vitamin C in it. I could turn the heat down a little bit. These get a little softer so they don't get all burned on the outside while they're still hard on the inside. These over here are a little bit hard still. I think I am going to add the Tajin. Yeah, I can smell that now. I can smell that vitamin C in there. Citric smell. Yes, those are good seasonings. For breakfast serving of rutabagas. Mmm, looks good. There, after cooking for about four minutes on medium instead of or on medium high instead of high, they're not browning quite as fast, but I'm sure they're softening up better. I think I'm going to season these in the pan. Take some bacon salt. Don't have much left. I'm going to finish it up, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we'll 
I'll take some garlic, mushroom garlic. Finish that one up as well. No, not quite. And we're going to put some Tajin. And I'm going to take the others, which were a little bit hard still, and I'll put them back in and mix them in. Cook them some more. Nice golden color with some brown, caramelized color. I think mm. I can let those coast. When I get down to the right temperature, I'll eat them for breakfast. That will be my breakfast, with or without an egg. Well, December the 20th. Plants are stretching out finally, getting tall. This one. I think I damaged by pulling off the little seed cover like that. So that one I'm just going to leave. Uh, let me see, onions that are surviving. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This one here looks like it just died. Of course over there had none. So, between cucumbers, tomatoes over here, and uh, watermelon, and squash, and pumpkin, we've got a bunch of tall, big plants. I'm working on my computer while I'm watching TV, while I'm eating in my easy chair, or when I'm just relaxing. This is what I do to keep my time moving along. I've got soybeans that we harvested that we grew and they're in pods because we didn't let them dry on the vine long enough to let them come out. We didn't use a harvesting machine that pops them out. So what we've got is a bunch of pods and what I do is I just put this tray on my lap open the pods, let the beans slide down to one side and I toss my pods up to the other side and when I've got enough pods to move I'll take those pods and I'll put them down here in the basket. Don't have to do this any specific time just while I'm relaxing. So it makes soybeans worth growing because it puts nitrogen back into the soil. Plus, soybeans are very versatile in survival mode. You can make milk, yogurt, all kinds of protein, textured protein, uh, vegetable protein. I'll just put this up like this and I'll try to get all the slivers to stay up there. And I'll just try to roll these into the corner right into an old peanut butter jar and uh, that's what we save them in. Then I'll knock all the flakes off and get another batch. In the last minute of our show I'd like to tell you about the real reason for this show. Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Without Jesus as my Savior, I would not be confident entering into these trying times that lay ahead. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, I suggest you send me an email at crunchtime at roadrunner.com and ask me how you can join the God who loves you, his son Jesus Christ, and his disciples in everlasting life. For now, I say to you, God bless and keep you and yours. I'll see you next week on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.